Now at the bottom of the interface, below the main panes that we looked at in the last lesson, we have the play bar, and this panel holds the time ruler and transport controls, which are pretty typical of the kind of thing that you'd find in any application that deals with animation. Over in the left here, below the transport controls, we have this button on the far left which opens the global animation options, where we can set things like the frame rate and duration of our animation. We also have this button with the speaker icon, which opens the audio panel, where we can load in an audio file from disk or from a chop network within the scene. We'll be talking about what a chop network is in more detail in a later module of this course, but essentially, besides motion effects tools, a chop network provides us with a tool set for editing audio files. And through this audio panel, we can point to that chop network to be able to hear the audio output of those audio edits. On the right hand side of the play bar, we have controls and options for keyframing for when we're animating. And like all other toolbars in Houdini, the play bar can be minimized and maximized, which can be useful for freeing up a bit more screen real estate when you're doing work like modeling or other tasks which don't involve animation. Above these main three panes, we have these two shelves which are divided by this vertical divider. And just like with panes, we can resize the shelves using this. Each of the shelves have a number of shelf tabs, and each of the shelf tabs contain collections of shelf tools. You can see as we click through these different shelf tabs that these tools are grouped into sets of tools that we're likely to use for certain types of tasks and work. On this right hand shelf, on my screen at least, you can see on the far right is this little arrow icon. And there's another one at the bottom of my display toolbar here. These arrows appear when there's more tools in a shelf or in a toolbar than will fit on screen. And we can just click on these to scroll through the tools or we can use the scroll wheel to do the same thing. So heading back up to the shelves, just like we saw with paint tabs, we can click on this little plus icon to add more shelf tabs. And you can see from this drop down all the different shelf tabs that are available to us. We can add new shelf tabs where we can add our own collections of tools and we can toggle a shelf tab on or off through this same menu by clicking on the little checkbox to the left of the shelf tab name. A shelf tool can be one of a few different things. And at the most basic level, a shelf tool might just add a single node to your network, but another shelf tool might be a more complex script which will do a number of things and lay down a whole number of different nodes in a single step. We'll be looking at various shelf tools in more detail later on in this course, but for now, we're just gonna push on looking at the rest of the UI. At the very top of the interface, we have the menu bar. And here we find the menu items that you'd expect to find in any application, such as file, where we can go to open and save files. The file menu is also where we go to create projects, which is something that we'll be looking at in more detail in a later lesson of this module. We've also got the edit menu where we find things like the preferences and settings options. We've got a render menu for various rendering related options. We've got the assets menu, which gives us options for managing Houdini digital assets. We've got a windows menu, and some of these options are essentially tabs, which you can find under the pane tabs menus. But here you can also say open a new floating pane, which has a network view tab by default, but we can just right click on this to set it to something else or add further tabs just as we can with any other pane, just as we looked at in the last lesson. Then lastly, we've got the help menu, which gives us the kind of things that we'd expect, such as being able to open the documentation and to be able to view details about the current version of Houdini that you're using. Next to these menus, we have the desktops menu and desktops are essentially different layout presets. We're currently in the build desktop, which is the default layout. But if I change the desktop to a different preset, such as this look dev desktop, you see the whole UI changes considerably and it's been set up to provide the kind of tools and viewers that we're likely to need when working on lighting and rendering and shading. We can customize any of these desktops and save them as our own preset desktop, or we could even start from scratch and build our own from the ground up and then save that as a new custom desktop. So for example, let's just switch back to the default build desktop and I'll hit alt and right square bracket to split this pane top bottom. And I'm gonna right click on this first tab and I'm gonna change this to say be a geometry spreadsheet. And then I'll drag my animation editor and my render view from this top pane down to this new pane. Let's save this by going back to the desktops menu and choosing save current desktop as. And let's save this as custom 01. And now under our desktops menu, we can see that new desktop that we created listed amongst these other presets.
So we could say switch back to the build desktop and you'll notice that we don't really see any change and that's because it was the build desktop that we customized and then saved as another version. So if we want to get back to that default build desktop, we can just go down to reload current desktop and that resets it to the saved version. Then if we want to go back to our custom desktop, we can just select it again from the desktop's drop down and we can switch between that and any other desktop currently available to us. Next to the desktops, we have our radial menus drop down and we use this to set the tool set that we get when we bring up the radial menu. Radial menus are used when we're working in the viewport and we bring up a radial menu by tapping the C key whilst hovering the cursor over the viewport. And when we do that, the radial menu appears under the cursor and then we swipe through in the direction of the menu item that we want to browse through and continue to swipe through the different directories. And then we click on the tool that we're after to select it. The default radial menu is this main menu, which has lots of different options, but then we can go to this radial menu drop down and select a radial menu for a specific task, such as say poly modeling. And now if we tap the C key whilst hovering over the viewport, we get a much smaller subset of tools suited specifically to poly modeling tasks. We can also edit any of these preset radial menus to customize them to suit our own needs, or we can create our own radial menus completely from scratch. Over on the right hand side of the menu bar, we have the takes menu. Takes are a way of saving sets of parameter settings. So a common use for takes would be to have one take for quick draft render settings and then another take for final production quality render settings. This menu is where we would see the different takes that we have in the scene and we can quickly switch between them from here. And then finally we have this help button and if we click on this, we get the help browser appear in a new tab and we can use that help button to toggle this browser on and off. So that rounds up our overview of the Houdini UI. Throughout the course, we'll be digging deeper into specific aspects of the interface as and when they become relevant to the current topic.